This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video tutorial, we'll recover this Lazy Boy recliner seat cushion with new decorative fabric from Sayerite. In a separate video, we showed recovering the whole chair. Be sure to watch that video if you desire to recover an old recliner yourself. Recovering the seat cushion is very easily done. Continue watching to see how to DIY do it yourself. Cindy, an expert seamstress and upholsterer, is going to show us how it's done. Here's Cindy. Cindy will start by disassembling the old seat cushion. This one has a separate seat cushion. This is the seat cushion and it's still in really good condition. It's real firm and it looks great. So we are just going to remake the cover for this to match our new fabric. Um, so I need to take the core out to do, use this piece as my pattern. And also on this one, because I know I'm going to take it apart as I'm working with it, I'm not going to wrestle with this to take it out of the core or out of the cover. I'm just going to cut it apart and make my life a little bit easier today. I'm ready to make the cushion for this chair and I've already taken um, this uh, panel off and I just want to mark the back of it so I get it going the right direction from side to side and top to bottom. So I'm going to put a pin back there. Cindy has cut out one of the plates. She'll use that to pattern the decorative fabric. That's coming up next. And fold it in half so I can get my center again and I'm going to try to kind of just center this one paisley in the middle of this cushion and cut this piece out just like it is. Using multi-use pins, we will pin this fabric to the decorative fabric so it won't move when we're cutting it out. We will just use scissors and trim along the outer edge of this fabric. We will not show that. So I want to put a pin in the back of this piece also so I make sure I get everything going the right direction. This area right here of the front is a little bit curved and we want to cut it like that again. So you can see on the edge of mine, it's a little bit curved to match the chair. We want a mirror image. The cushion requires a top plate and bottom plate. We'll use this one to mirror an image for the next plate. She also uses a push pin to mark the back location of that second plate. So there's my top and bottom plate for the cushion and then I need to cut the zipper and the boxing. The remainder of the old cushion cover will be measured now. The boxing on this is five and three quarter inches wide. It's five and a quarter to the seam and I need to add a half an inch for the seam over here. So I'm going to cut this five and three quarters by and this just needs to be a rough measurement. It doesn't have to be exact. about 64. If I go to this around the center of the front it's 32 so I'm going to cut it five and three quarters by 64. And I think I would like to have this little hook part on the center of my band so I'm going to put my five and three quarters here. So to make sure this is the same all the way across I'm using this little um, part of the design and marking it from here to here and then I'll use the next one over there also. This is the boxing that will go around the front of our cushion and the sides. We'll cut a separate boxing for the zipper plaque which is a boxing that contains a zipper in the back of the cushion. Then I can use my ruler to measure up from my first line the five and three quarters. If you're doing upholstery and canvas applications, I highly recommend the clear acrylic ruler from Sayerite. The width of the fabric is only 54 and I needed 64. So I'm going to lay this on matching up the patterns and cut another piece and cut it off at about 10 inches, 10 to 12 inches. And I need to add, in order to get this 64, I need to add about 5 inches to each side. 
Outside surfaces are facing each other, then Cindy will use the pins and pin it together. She'll do the same thing on the opposite end to extend the length of this boxing that will go around the front and sides. I'm going to take this over and add it to the other side. So I have a little bit added to each end of this boxing strip. Next up, cutting the zipper plaque boxing. I'm ready to cut the pieces for the zipper plaque and I'm going to just measure the length of the original one, which is about 29 inches with a seam. I'm going to make it 30 and the width of these two pieces need to be this measurement right here, two and seven eighths plus one inch for what we're going to turn under for the zipper here. So I want to cut my piece 30 by three and seven eighths. I'm going to need two of these to make the zipper, so I'll need two 30 by three and seven eighths inch pieces. We will not show Cindy cutting those out. Next up, we'll be creating the zipper plaque. So I needed to turn under one inch on each one of these for, um, to apply the zipper in the center and I'm going to use the seam stick to help me with that and I'm just going to press it along the edge. Seam stick is awesome. It's a double-sided tape that can be used to baste seams, hems, and other applications together to make it easier to take assemblies to the sewing machine and sew them without it moving. Peel off the backing. and press under my one inch here. Because the hem is basted in place, now we can just take it to the sewing machine and lay it over the zipper and sew the zipper to the assembly. We're gonna use the Serite Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine. The fabric assembly's fold is centered over top of the zipper's teeth. The presser foot foot is actually riding against the teeth with the fabric on top of the zipper's teeth. We're sewing a straight stitch about five millimeters in length. I'm going to cut the extra zipper off now and apply the other side of the zipper the same way and just butt the two folded edges right up next to each other. The Sayerite Ultrafeed sewing machines are the world's best portable walking foot sewing machine. They're excellent for canvas and upholstery applications like this. You can find them at www.sayerite.com. To put the slider on, I hold the tab up and slide it onto the teeth a little bit as far down as I can and pull on both sides of it. This is a locking slider. We're going to set this aside now and sew the boxing onto the plate. I'm going to add this little uh, six inch, five, in, five or six inch piece to the side of my boxing. Cindy sews about a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric, reversing at the beginning and the end to lock the stitch in place. Then she'll do the same to the other end. I'm going to put a little clip in the center, matching up these two seams in the center of my boxing at the top and at the bottom. And on one of my plates, I'm going to do the same. Here's the back. So this is the front. And I'm going to put a clip in the center. These clips will be used to find the center of the boxing and obviously the center of the plate. And match up my two clips. She'll start sewing at that center location about an inch away, sew past the clip and sew on to the corner, keeping the stitch about a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric. 
being sure the raw edges of the boxing and the plate are matching up. Upon reaching a corner, a clip is placed in the boxing, not deeper than the stitch allowance, which is a half inch. This clip allows the fabric to go smoothly around the corner. Stop stitching about five or six inches from the edge because the zipper is going to come around this corner and come down here. So I'm not going to sew that right now. I'm going to go back and sew around the other side. She started at the center location on the front of the cushion. She's going to flip the assembly and start there again going the opposite direction. So I'm back here at the center where my clips are and I'm going to stitch here and down this side. Follow the same procedure as we did when we sewed the opposite side. When you reach the corner, make a clip in the boxing as done before. The boxing is on the underside of the plate. The plate's on top. I'm going to stop about five or six inches from the edge because the zipper will come around this corner. And I may need to trim some of this off. It may be too long, but it's a lot easier to have it too long than it is to have it too short and have to add in the middle of this process. I'm going to fold this in half at the back. And make a clip. And I'm going to fold the zipper in half and make a clip. Same process, finding the center of the back of the plate and the center of the zipper plaque. Never make your clips deeper than the seam allowance. Our seam allowance is a half inch. And match up my clips here at the back also. Outside surfaces of the plate and the boxing or zipper plaque are facing each other. And I'm only going to stitch around the corner about an inch or an inch and a half and stop. And then I can decide how long I want this piece to be. It looks like I can cut off a couple of inches. I have all this folded underneath, which protects the end of the zipper. So I'm going to cut off a little bit and use part of it for my zipper uh, stop. And then I'm going to sew these two pieces right sides together. This is the boxing and the zipper. When sewing these two boxing pieces together, she'll sew a half inch from the raw edge. But before she goes over the zipper, she'll add that little tab that she cut off. That will create a good stop for the zipper and also reinforce the zipper. I'm going to fold this in half to make a zipper stop out here. And now I can go back and finish up this side seam. This extra fabric gets tucked underneath the zipper. So when it's finished, it'll look like that. This, this little fold protects the end of the zipper. And I'll do the same thing at the other side. Since this step is repeated, we are not going to show it for this end. Obviously, the assembly was flipped. Let's move on. Coming up next, we'll be sewing the last plate to the assembly. I have this one plate all sewn on all the way around, all four sides. I'm going to fold my boxing at each corner and put a clip. 
And if you fold back the two seams, the side and the front seam, and then fold this out straight, you'll get a clip at the same spot on the corner as the other one was. So your corners will match up when you're finished. It is extremely important to put these clips at the corners to make sure that the last plate matches up perfectly. And I'm going to put clips in the center on this piece also, at the front and the back. So here's my center clips at the front. I'm going to start at the front, and on this piece, I can go all the way around. I don't have to start and stop. Cindy will sew all around this assembly, being sure the stitch is a half inch from the edge of the fabric, and being sure the edges are lined up as she sews. So here's the clip that I just made at, that, at the corner from here, and it's a little bit too long to match this corner. So I'm going to push it back just a little bit and ease it in as I go across there. That's why these clips are important. You need them to match up. You can pull or push a fabric in to get it to match up. That's what Cindy's doing here. Once she reaches a corner, she will bury her needle, lift her foot, roll the fabric around, then lower the foot, and then continue to sew down the other side. This one's back here, it's a little bit too short, and I have all this extra fabric here, so I can ease this one out a little bit. And on the back edge, I can check my two clips and see if they're close and these are really close. We'll skip ahead to the end where she started sewing. That's all there is to making this cushion. Coming up next we'll insert the foam back into the new cushion cover. To turn the assembly right side out the zipper needs to be unzipped. This is a locking zipper so the tab has to be pulled on in order for the zipper to open up the cover. So I can turn it inside out and because you made all those clips at the corners, you have nice square corners. This is the front of the cushion because it has the uh, Dacron wrapped around the front. The back does not. That noise you hear in the background is our 50-foot plotter table that is cutting out sails for sailboats. It is a vacuum table, so it's rather loud. It is business as usual here at Sailrite. When inserting foam into any cover, it is imperative that you put your hand inside of the cushion cover to push the foam into the corners, as Cindy is doing here. The cushion's finished. Thanks, Cindy. This seat cushion for the recliner, which is a Lazy Boy brand, is now complete. Coming up next is the materials list and tools that were used to build this seat cushion. You'll find hundreds of decorative fabrics at Sailrite. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sailrite website or subscribe to the Sailrite YouTube channel. It's your loyal patronage to Say All Right that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Say All Right, thanks for watching.